monochrome Bitcoin ETF provides investors with a regulated pathway into the cryptocurrency market. When you're ready to take your investments to the next level, you might want to consider monochrome. Hello and welcome to The Global View on this Monday. I'm Andrew Gagan. Good to have you with us here at AusBiz as we begin a brand new week. Well, let's first take a look at what happened on Friday. Global equities are ending strongly for the week there. Moderate rise in US inflation buoyed investors with Wall Street's major indices recouping some of the losses earlier in the week as investors flocked back to tech mega caps. Economically sensitive small cap stocks also rose. Shares in industrial conglomerate 3M soared to a two-year high after it raised the lower end of its annual adjusted profit forecast, having shifted its focus to high-growth businesses such as EVs and climate technology. Members of the so-called Magnificent Seven mostly rose, led by Meta, which reports this week along with Microsoft, Apple and Amazon. Chip stocks also rose, led by Marvel, Broadcom, Texas Instruments and Qualcomm. Deckers Outdoor, those shares surged after it raised its annual profit forecast while oil-filled services firm Baker Hughes beat estimates for second quarter profit. Shares in medical device maker Dexcom slumped after, after cutting its annual revenue forecast. Meanwhile, in Europe, a gauge of the 10 biggest luxury names rose around 3%, the best performance in six months, including Hermes, which beat second quarter sales expectations. Well, U.S. inflation increased moderately in June as the falling cost of goods countered strong service price growth. The Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index rising 0.1% last month after being unchanged in May, while excluding food and energy components core PCE rose 0.2%. The report also showed consumer spending slowed last month, increasing 0.3%, driven by a rise in outlays for services. And wages increased 0.3% after surging 0.6% in May. Well, the yield on the two-year note fell around five basis points to 4.38% and the 10-year was down to 4.2%. Markets now awaiting the outcome of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy decision this week, with traders seeing a very slightly chance of a rate cut with bets that the central bank will begin cutting in September. And the US dollar eased after the release of tame US inflation data. There will also be focus on the Bank of Japan this week with markets pricing a 64% chance that it will lift its lending rate by 10 basis points. The Aussie is at 65.6 US cents. Well, let's get across particularly those central bank moves this week. Isaac Poole joining us from Ascalon Capital. He is the chief investment officer there. Isaac, great to catch up with you on this Monday morning. It is a big week ahead, isn't it? So let's first start with the Fed and expectations there. Look, markets essentially pricing in 100% 100% chance that rates are going to be cut in September. What are we going to be hearing this week, do you think? Yeah, I think the markets are broadly right there. We're, we're seeing the economy is slowing, but importantly, inflation is getting back towards where the Fed would like it. It's not quite there yet, but we're going to hear, I think, from Fed Chair Powell that there's increased confidence that inflation is going to get back to their target within an appropriate time frame, And that's really what they've been saying for several months now, we need to be more confident that the economy is slowing enough that we can start to take rates lower. Um, We're not there yet. So this week, no change, but that communication will, I think, set up a a rate cut for September. So we are seeing that slowdown in the US economy. Is it going to escape recession? Is the the Fed still on, on that narrow path, if you like? Well, it, it's a narrow path, and I think it's narrowing quite quickly. What we what we look at for when we worry about recessions are three three indicators: the manufacturing PMI, the change in the unemployment rate, and the yield curve. And all three of those are not flashing a red signal for a recession yet, but they're moving towards those trigger levels that suggest an, a, a recession is more likely than not. Uh, and importantly, we'll get a couple of those indicators this week, but not until after the Fed meets. And so I I suspect that if those data, the manufacturing PMI and the unemployment rate continue to weaken, 
then those uh, those pricings for rate cuts in September are going to give way to some very deep uh, pricing for very deep rate cuts come December as well. How's this been reflected on um, among the treasuries at the moment, where those yields are heading? Well, they're moving lower, and and I think that's appropriate because uh, there is going to be need to be, I think, more than just a couple of rate cuts from the Fed if they're going to avoid a recession. One in September and one in December, and then a pause is not going to get it done. I think uh, I think we're going to need to see deeper rate cuts, and what what you're going to see in in the Treasuries uh, over the coming months, I think is that yield curve, the difference between the two year and the 10 year, move from being inverted or negative to steepening up, normalizing back through zero into positive territory. And that is important to keep an eye on because over history, an inverted yield curve has always preceded a recession, but the recession becomes imminent when the yield curve normalizes. And we're getting very close to that now. So that's something to keep a a very close eye on over the next month or two months. Isaac, what are you seeing on the equity market at the moment, particularly when you take a look at Wall Street? We did have a bit of a pullback last week, although see, it was a long time coming, wasn't it? I think the S&P had not had a fall of more than 2% in close to 400 days. We got that last week. Um, off the back of perhaps some, some less than, um, than uh, well, the market wasn't particularly impressed with some of those, those large cap earning results we got from, the, from big tech. Um, Then, of course, you factor in what the Fed is likely to do. How are you seeing that pan out for equities at the moment? I mean, I think the equity market has been priced for this perfect soft landing for some time now. And and it's also been boosted by expectations that investment in AI will give way to increased productivity or increased revenues as a result of that investment. And, And this is going to be a bit of a challenge going forward because the economy is slowing. We're going to see sales growth come under challenge uh, across the equity market index. On top of that, profit margins, which had been widening over the last uh, several quarters, now look like they've peaked out and if anything will start to compress. And and that's only natural because consumers are spending less. There's less uh, pricing power, particularly in that consumer discretionary side. And and that I think is coming through in both the earnings reports and the guidance. And when you get to the big tech names, I think investors are now saying, well, show me the money. Where, where is the revenue that's coming from this huge amount of investment? And, uh, and that may be some time off. So it is a bit of a risk, perhaps, that after, after seeing that price for perfection, equity markets take a bit of a correction, uh, maybe hit a bit of an air pocket, move, uh, move down a little. And, uh, and I think that would be sensible from here. And the challenge is, of course, that uh, there could be a wall of money race in there and go, oh, well, I'm, I'm picking up. Nvidia, I'm picking up these other big names at, at cheap levels, but I would say be cautious here mm. because the economy is slowing and we could see further moves. We, of course, we've also seen that rotation into small caps. Is that likely to continue, do you think? I think it will be difficult for that to be sustainable if the economy slows further. If you, if you want to buy into that small cap rotation, then you uh, really need to believe in not just a soft landing, I think, but some sort of stabilisation or re-acceleration of economic growth, because that will be what's positive for that small cap part of the market. If we see growth continue to slow in the near term, then it will be difficult, I think, for small caps to climb that wall of worry. Uh, and, And I would say that perhaps you will find better opportunities down the track to enter into that sort of a trade. Now, not just the Fed in focus this week, we've also got the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan. A lot of speculation there that the BOJ will move. Um, What are your thoughts? Well, the Bank of Japan is a difficult one because they they do like to throw sort of tape bombs out into the market and surprise the market, especially when there's a big consensus building up. And and we have seen a big build up in consensus that the the, the Bank of Japan will hike rates and uh, slow their bond purchases. I think the latter, absolutely, that's been uh, um, forecast and and predicted there by the Bank of Japan itself that they'll slow the pace of purchases. But a rate hike, uh, I feel, is we're we're getting towards the end of the opportunity for the Bank of Japan to hike rates further. So yes, we may get one, but I think the opportunity for further hikes is ending. Uh, and you know, this is going to be a challenge for the Bank of Japan uh, to, to really durably get rates higher to a level that they can leave it there and then cut if the global economy does slow. 
And I say the Bank of England, look, inflation remaining sticky there. So is that likely to remain on hold as a result? This is a real line ball meeting, I think. Uh, services inflation is sticky. There's been some stickiness in goods inflation, but the economy is clearly slowing uh, and rates will be restrictive, even if you get one or even two rate high, uh, cuts Sorry, in the next few months. The, the direction is clearly lower. Uh, rates will need to fall in the UK to avoid a, a tip back into a recession. Um, but this this week, uh, the, the pro- balance of probability suggests a cut, but it's not a done deal. Isaac, enjoy the week ahead. Thanks so much for joining us from Ascon Capital. Thanks, Andrew. All right, let's take a look at where the local market is likely to open as we can see spy futures up there three quarters of a cent so we are seeing that momentum from friday flow into today and of course we are just a couple of minutes away from the open stay with us for that